Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and welcome to Biology Essentials Video 32. This is on signal transmission and gene expression. Um, it sounds confusing, but it's actually fairly simple. Um, one of my favorite videos I've ever seen on YouTube is the guys who jump off the mountains in Norway with these wingsuits on. And they'll fly right over the earth, just kind of skimming it. Even though they're falling, it's like they're flying. Now, I would imagine as they're doing that, adrenaline just must be coursing through their body. They must have heightened heart rate. They must just be really alert. And and so that actually has a lot to do with biology. Adrenaline is made up of epinephrine, and epinephrine is a chemical that will move through your body and gives you all these physiological effects. If you've ever been almost in a car accident and you feel this heightened alertness and you've, you're, you're heart rate is racing, you start to sweat, all of that is this fight or flight response. And that epinephrine, just a simple chemical as it moves through your body, can have all these uh, huge consequences. And so that's what this podcast is. It's not about wingsuits, but it is about that. And so, um, so signal transmission is chemicals that move throughout your body. Um, there are a couple of different ways that we can transmit those signals. They can move intercellular, that means from cell to cell to cell, and they can also move within the cell itself. And so I'll show you some examples of that. Know that chemicals aren't limited to the cell. They can move throughout your body, and the endocrine system is an example of that. The specific example I'll talk today about is epinephrine. Epinephrine, remember, is that adrenaline. And what it can do is it can change cell function. It can change what a cell is doing or what a cell is producing. Example I'll talk about is how it can create and activate phosphorylase, which can actually free up glucose. Glucose, remember, is that energy coinage in our body. We use it to make ATP. And so epinephrine can cause cells, especially in your liver, to give off glucose. They can also actually cause gene expression. They can actually cause the DNA to express different proteins. Uh, example I'll talk about is the Krebs uh, transcription factor and how that can also increase the amount of glucose that's given off and also add to that fight or flight. And so what are we talking about? Well, the liver, which is this right here, um, the liver actually is one of the larger organs in the body, but it contains glucose. It contains glucose form in the form of glycogen, so it's a bunch of glucose molecules attached together. And so what epinephrine can do is it can actually go into glucose, it can spread throughout all the cells of the liver, and cause them to give off glucose. But in this podcast, I'm going to show you that how that actually occurs. In other words, how we can have epinephrine out here, it can move from cell to cell and cause the production of glucose, and how it can also go all the way into the nucleus and cause changes in gene expression. And so this seems confusing, and I've left off all the names of all of these things to make it a little simpler, but what I'm going to show you today is something called a signal transduction pathway, and I think it'll make sense when I'm done. And so what do we start with? Well, first of all, this is going to be the inside of the cell, and this is going to be the outside of the cell. And so where does the message come from? It comes from the adrenal gland in the form of epinephrine. So epinephrine is a chemical. It's just going to diffuse throughout your whole body. And uh, let me show you some other parts. This is called a receptor protein. It picks up that message from epinephrine. And these are all different types of proteins. And so this is a G protein. This protein, will, I'll show you in just a second. And so what happens with epinephrine? Epinephrine will actually latch on to the receptor, and it causes a change in the shape of that receptor. That will actually phosphorylate or add energy to this other protein. That other protein will attach onto this red protein, and now it acts as an enzyme. And it's an enzyme that makes uh, cyclic uh, adenosine monophosphate. And that seems like a scary word, but you know what this is already. ATP is adenosine triphosphate, and if we lose two of those phosphates, we now become adenosine monophosphate, and you actually get this circle bond forming where that phosphate is, and that's where the CAMP, or some people call it CAMP, comes from. It's just converted from ATP, and it uses this activated enzyme to do that. Okay, what happens to that CAMP, or that CAMP? It'll actually go to another protein, and that protein has four different parts to it. It has these parts, which are catalytic, they're activated, and these are regulatory. And until the camp shows up, then we don't release those catalytic uh, enzymes. This whole thing is called a protein kinase. So now with camp available, now we have this active catalytic subunit, which can activate phosphorylase. It's actually going to transfer a, a phosphate group to it. And now we have phosphorylase, which can actually 
break that glycogen into glucose. And we can free up that glucose as a part of that fight or flight response. Now you might be thinking this is like some kind of a, a mousetrap game where you have um, one thing come in or a Rube Goldberg device where you have all these steps to eventually just release glucose. I mean, why doesn't epinephrine just flow right into the cell? Well, number one, it can't move across this lipid layer. But the other thing that I'm really not showing you is that there's not only one G subunit that moves. This branches out to a bunch of these. And this breaks out to the CAMP. And each of these can activate a bunch of these protein kinases. And this can activate a bunch of the phosphor. And so at each step along the signal transduction pathway, we can amplify that signal. And so we can have just one epinephrine create billions of glucose molecules. And so not only do we have control at every step, but we can also amplify that. And that's the importance of, uh, of signal transduction pathway, just a few signals can lead to a bunch of glucose. Okay, so that would be change in the cell function. We went from a cell that doesn't release any glucose to one that releases a bunch of glucose. But I also said that we can actually use it to do gene expression or express different genes. And so if you look here, this looks exactly like it did before. But let's say that I were to remove one thing. Let's say I were to move that protein that actually breaks down the glycogen. Are we out of luck? No, because epinephrine can do the following. And so in order to make that protein, remember, we need DNA to express a, a protein. And so the only thing I'm doing is I'm removing the protein, I'm adding the DNA, and adding one more chemical called CREB. Uh, CREB is simply a transcription factor. And so what happens next? Well, epinephrine is going to show up again. It's going to attach to the receptor. It's going to phosphorylate that protein. It's going to make our cyclic uh, AMP or our CAMP. That's going to activate our protein kinase. It's going to release those catalytic subunits. But now, instead of these activating the protein, watch what happens to the catalytic subunit now. It actually activates CREB. CREB is a transcription factor, so it adds to the DNA. There's a few steps that I'm not showing here, but what it really does is allow RNA polymerase to grab on, make messenger RNA, make a new protein. This is called phosphatase, which is part of this breakdown of glycogen as well. It's activated by that catalytic subunit, and now we can make more glucose again. So even though we didn't have the protein, we can now make a bunch of that glucose really, really quickly. What's the only thing we've added? We've now added this transcription factor, CREB, so we can actually make more of those proteins. And so the whole point of, of signal transmission and signal transduction is that we can allow, uh, we can receive a signal, that signal can activate a, a series of events which would eventually have an action. In this case, we're expressing the genes. Now some of these signals, instead of actually hitting a receptor on the outside can actually move through and move into the, uh, into the nucleus and act that way as well. And so that's how you get that fight or flight, or it's just one part of that, uh, that response. And so that's gene expression, that's signal transduction, and I hope that's helpful.